We all know building into a mini ITX PC is rather challenging due to the size of the case. However, there's one challenge right before we build into the case itself, which is selecting the parts. Hey guys, this is Joe from Jojo Coco. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be building a mini ITX PC and I'm gonna go through what are the things that we should watch out and what are the things that we should avoid. So if I'm missing anything, please leave in the comments down below and so we can have a good discussion and let's get started, guys. First off, the case. Now, I know this is quite obvious, but for me, the most important feature in a case is the maximum graphics card length, width, and height. If you're planning to play games of 4K, 60 frames per second, you're likely gonna get a 1080 Ti. Now some 1080 Ti's are quite thick. They take up more than two expansion slots, like this one right here. This is the Aorus 1080 Ti. It has a triple stack fan design, making it the card a little bit thicker. So just watch out for the thickness. As for the height, you guessed it. Some cases, they do support full length, but like the height-wise, they just couldn't do it. I actually have a mini ITX case that I modded like a few months ago, and then I can't put this particular card right here into that case. Another important feature in a mini ITX case is the CPU cooler height limitations. The more height limitations we have, the more CPU cooler we can shop around. But just looking at the case itself, if it's one of those console-like mini ITX case, you need a low profile CPU cooler, like this one right here. This is the Reven Brontes, one of the lowest profile C-shaped CPU cooler that I can find in the market. At only 59 millimeters of height and with the slim shape guaranteed universal compatibility, that's what they said, you can definitely fit this guy in most mini ITX cases. And check it out guys, sleep cables, four six millimeter heat pipes, super duper quiet 100 millimeter fan from 650 to 2200 RPM, and at a reasonable price at $36.99. Talking about cooling down temperatures, I tried to look for a mini ITX case that can mount a lot of case fans but have a small footprint. Of course, those bigger mini ITX cases that is worth mentioning, for example, the Fractal Design Nano S or the NZXT Manta or the H200i that is coming out pretty soon, has exceptional airflow. I've done some quick research of getting the best of both worlds, having good airflow and still have that slim console look alike. So I found two interesting cases, one from Fractal Design, the Node 202. I guess you probably know about this already because this case has been around for a while. The second one I found and we're gonna build in today is the Silverstone Raven RVZ03. This is the latest mini ITX case and, it's, and it is the successor of the RVZ02. I'm pretty sure you guys know about that as well. However, the RVZ02 didn't come with a case fan and you can't mount a case fan as well. It is all entirely depending on the, the graphics card and the CPU cooler you have. All right, so the case is pretty much done and let's move on to the motherboard. In my opinion, when we're shopping around for a mini ITX motherboard, just for convenience, I think we should look for integrated Wi-Fi. This is because we don't have to shop for like uh, something like this, the USB dongle. And so we don't have anything else sticking out from the back of the computer. And also the performance in the integrated Wi-Fi might be a little bit better than using a USB. Since the motherboard is the smallest form factor that you can get, there are only two RAM slots available. And I highly suggest you max your RAM budget because obviously you can't add any more RAM in the future. Another thing to keep in mind when buying a mini ITX motherboard are the connector locations. Some connector locations are located at an awkward place. For example, normally the 24 pin power connector is located on the right hand side. But this particular mini ITX motherboard is located at the top of the motherboard. This could cause cable management a little bit of a challenge as most cases are designed to route the 24 pin on the right hand side. Other connectors like the USB 3.0, the SATA, the front header connectors, make sure they are mostly located on the right hand side of the motherboard so you wouldn't have cables reaching over the motherboard like this one right here. And last but not least, the power supply. 
If possible, I highly recommend you getting at least a semi-modular power supply. You could go for a fully mod modular power supply, but the thing is that if you're not gonna be replacing the, the 24 pin and the CPU pin with like custom sleeves, for example, cable mod, then I don't think there's a point getting a fully modular because you're gonna be using those wires anyways, right? Oh, and also guys, don't forget to check out the power supply size as well. Some mini ITX cases is they require SFF, small form factor power supply. So gotta watch out for those. All right guys, that pretty much wraps it up. There are three things that I check out before I build a mini ITX system. If I'm missing anything, don't forget to put in the comments down below. And in terms of specifications, the CPU, the graphics card, and the type of motherboard, it is totally up to you. Wait a minute guys, this is not about the performance of the mini ITX case. This video is basically about how everything fits into your mini ITX case. So make sure everything is compatible and you will be happy for the rest of the day. So enjoy this montage in building the RVZ03 and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later guys. So guys, so uh, as mentioned earlier, we should get at least a semi or a fully modular power supply. This is not modular at all, so it comes with all the Molex and SATA cables, and it's like really, really tight in here. So obviously, the the smaller the Mini ITX case, the, the the more the more things that you have to handle. So yeah, just to let you know, bad example, but we'll have to live with this.